let's take a view of what we're doing today from uh, from about 30,000 uh, feet and, t and take a look at the whole picture and what we're going to be accomplishing. Um, and, and let's see here. So, you know, the first thing we're going to talk about is, is what's a webinar. We're going to talk about the what is, you know, why is it a webinar, and we're going to talk about live, evergreen, and selecting webinar platforms. But what is a webinar? Uh, we're going to talk about different types of webinars because there are, are different things that you can do using webinar platforms. You can use them for training. Uh, you can use them for meetings and you can use them for sales. Um, a training webinar and it, you know, each one of these types of webinars um, is very, very separate and very, very different. Um, and they each have their own kind of uh, rules and characteristics so that each of these has you know, has a, you know, you have to success using them different ways. Um, a training webinar is a great uh, thing for, for a broker or manager to use for in-house group coaching. Uh, that's, that's an example of a, of a training webinar. Uh, a training webinar like that would also have some really, really good utility for recruiting. So a, a, a broker manager who is using, uh, you know, webinars in his business to help agents learn things, uh, where agents don't always have to come into the office, where they don't have to have a physical presence, um, and where he may be able to attract a lot more training, uh, could be done very, very well and used very, very effectively for in-house group coaching. Um, and that's, that type of coaching may be something very, very appealing to somebody who's working in another office. So a training webinar can be a great recruiting tool. Uh, meeting webinars are great. Um, you can have meetings, you know, all kinds of meetings. You can have client meetings on a webinar. Uh, you can use uh, GoToWebinar or GoToMeeting uh, to, uh, you know, to present offers. Uh, you, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times that I, you know, I was working with sellers and, and or buyers and, uh, and, and people were all in different physical locations, sometimes around the world. Uh, but people, you know, travel for business. You have people who are absentee owners. You have buyers who uh, who are in escrow, who are under contract, who may be out of town, um, and, uh, and 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 you have people who uh, you know who it would be nice, you know, to just to be able to sit down with them and show them something. Well, you can you know, do that in a virtual way. You don't have to do it in person. You don't have to do it in the flesh. You can have a meeting with clients and you can, uh, you can go over a contract. You can put the contract up on your screen, share that with people and, uh, you know, and go over the points and be very, very clear about that. I think that's a much better way than working with email in other ways. I think that's terrific. You can do presentations um, by webinar. Uh, goodness, years ago I was doing uh, using this to do to do listing presentations, and when you have out of state owners, that's a terrific way to do it. You know, it's again, it's much more personal. Uh, you have an ability to interact, to talk to people, uh, to hear what their concerns are, to be able to meet their objections and go on. Um, and you can have a conference um, on a webinar. Uh, you know, and, and with some of these webinar platforms right now, you can have a conference and uh, and have everybody's you know face up on the screen. Uh, one of the ways of doing this too is 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 having a webinar, you know, using Skype. You know, Skype is a you know for small groups and for for meetings and for these small conferences and masterminds even, uh, you know, Skype works very very well. Uh, and uh, and and you know, Skype is you know for that type of meeting is very very inexpensive. Um, so it's great for conferences. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the sales webinar. Now, this is the one that we're going to focus on primarily today. Uh, we will be talking about the others, but for the you know for the purposes of uh, of webinar fever starting out, and for the core training, we're going to be talking about sales webinars and how to use the sales webinars. Again, we uh, we're talking about using webinars to engage with people, to to reach out and. Uh, and help alleviate their pain somewhere. You know what pain? What are they? What you know? What kind of pain are they feeling? Um, in real estate, I think a lot of people right now are feeling pain about financing. They have credit issues. They have, they have, uh, you know, they have problems. Sellers have problems because a lot of sellers are, are underwater and they owe more on their house than their house is worth. Um, and of course, you have lots of new things that are happening. You have trends. So having an educational. Uh, type of an outreach program that that of course is part of your marketing program is is what I refer to as edu marketing and I've got that in bold on on that uh, 
mind map because I think that is really, really key. And that is really where the focus of my attention is uh, for, you know, for, for, for this uh, program. Um, product creation is another thing we can do with a sales webinar. Again, you can take the webinar and you can repurpose it after the live event is finished. Now, this is, uh, you know, early on um, on a Saturday morning, we're creating this live webinar. Um, at the same time that we're creating the live webinar, I am recording it. And when I have finished recording it, you know, I'm going to be doing some other stuff with that recording, you know, and, and, uh, and, and you can do this anywhere. So we're going to talk about other niches and, and some advanced techniques about working with this material. Uh, and I'm also going to be talking today about actually converting this to, uh, to another kind of webinar altogether. Uh, the other thing you can do with webinars and is, is also create bonus material for other stuff that you're doing. And, um, and one of the things to do as part of a sales webinar is wrap it up in a package, you know, kind of a, a, um, an offering of, of information in different modalities for people to read. Uh, it's great, a great, great bribe. Yeah, it's called an ethical bribe in, in the internet marketing world. It's called an ethical bribe is when it's an incentive for people to register. And you may say, you know, if you register for my webinar, I'll be happy to share a special report. Uh, what you want to be, you know, to, to pay attention to when you create a special report or offer that is make sure that the that the subject in the special report is something that corresponds to the subject in the webinar that you are offering. You may want to take some information and create an e-course. And, uh, and what's an e-course? Well, you know what? It's really simple. An e-course is a series of emails uh, and, uh, and perhaps, you know, a combination of blog posts, if you, if you, if you like, that, uh, that cover a topic in, in very, very small bites. So you may want to create an e-course. Again, you know, I, I keep coming back to HUD Homes because I'm just, you know, a HUD Homes, uh, you know, I have a HUD Homes passion. Uh, but you may want to create a, a, an e-course an e on how to, uh, how to buy a HUD Home. You know, how, you know, what is a HUD Home? Uh, who can buy HUD Homes? Um, you know, what are the timelines? Uh, you know, what do you need to have before you buy that in a series of emails uh, that may be actually linked to a uh, to a blog post or a video and um, and then schedule those emails to go out on a, you know, once a day over a week or so or maybe every other day and then call it an e-course. You know, it, what it is, is it's um, it's a, it's a drip or autoresponder system. And that's what we used to call it. We used to say we have a, you know, we have a drip campaign and an e, you know, an e-course is a uh, really a, a nice euphemism for, for an email campaign that contains valuable information that people will use to help them understand how to do something better. You know, how to, uh, maybe how to buy a HUD home or how to stage their homes or maybe how to, how to sell their homes on their own. I think that the e-courses and campaigns around FISBOs is really exciting. I think, and if you hang, you know, if you, if you hang with me for a bit, you're going to see some really fun stuff happening around, uh, FISBOs. And I'm going to be taking all of this information and, and doing some really, really fun stuff with FISBOs in, in the near term here. I, I, I love FISBOs. I used to love them as a realtor when I was a realtor and, and I still do. Um, you want, again, you can create a video series. So instead of just having a, an email that contains the information, you uh, may have an email that has a link to a video that has, uh, you know, a small webcast of you or a small video of you just talking about something for 60 seconds or, or less or more, but you know, under two minutes, but that kind of video series is very popular. Uh, you might also offer them a, you know, a free consultation with you if, uh, if they attend. And, and of course, a consultation is something that gets you um, on the phone with them or in person with them and, and, and helps you connect offline, you know, in a very, very meaningful way. Um, we're going to be talking about why a webinar is important and, uh, and you know, why, 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 why a webinar is, is good is because a webinar is something that really, really is, uh, you know, makes people think of, uh, of attending. It's an event. Uh, so there's a different thought about, about, about that. 
uh, than there is, you know, when there isn't not an event attached to it. Um, so people, you know, make a, you know, put, put something on their calendar, they make an event, they make a commitment to attend. And when people are making that kind of a commitment, they're giving it a lot of attention. Um, we're going to be talking about live webinars. Okay, live webinars happen in real time. Uh, you've got, uh, you, you know, you have video and audio. You can see the screen, you can see a screen and you can hear somebody speaking. Uh, when you see the screen, you can see the presentation and sometimes you can also see the presenter. Um, the audio is, uh, is a, it happens on the telephone or on the computer. Uh, if you're listening to this live, you're, you, you know, I've given you a choice with go to webinar of listening to this on on the telephone using a telephone number that go to webinar provides or by VoIP on the computer. Um, as a webinar presenter, you should understand and you should know that when people have, uh, you know, an opportunity to do one or the other, that a telephone is the type of audio receiving instrument that really works best. And if you're going to start doing webinars and you haven't already, what you will find, I guarantee, um, over time is that you will have a lot of people who are listening to it on their computer who will say they're having great difficulty. A lot of the difficulty in listening on the computer is difficulty that is a, a, an absolute function of a person's uh, computer and or connection. Um, and I know that if I have hundreds of people on the line, I may have, let's say 600 people on a line. If I have 500 who can hear me fine, and there will be 100 who will always say, you know, uh, maybe maybe not that many at a time, but usually there's a fair, fairly good size number and, and percentage of people who just can't hear it. Um, and again, that, that becomes another reason for um, you know, for people to, to 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 start thinking about about what we call an evergreen webinar, okay? An evergreen webinar is not something in real time. It has the video. It can be somewhat interactive, but it's different, okay? It is different um, because it's it's pre-recorded. It's automated. What I'm going to be doing with today's live webinar is taking the the video or videos, because I'm going to have a lot of videos, and I'm going to be creating uh, some evergreen webinars. And those are evergreen webinars that will be contain video. Uh, they will also, you know, my evergreen webinars will simulate a live webinar. And there will be a feeling uh, by the people who are attending that, you know, they'll have a sense that, 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 that it's happening live. Um, there are certain presentation skills attached to doing a live webinar, uh, I mean, uh, you know, that can, that can be used well as an evergreen webinar. And, I, and I'll give you an example. I, I promised you earlier that I would share with you, um, you know, a, a, a mistake and a faux pas. Now, if I was really, really paying attention, um, I would probably not say this morning or this afternoon or this evening or, or make it, you know, or, or refer to the time of day. I would not refer to, to the date or the season because an evergreen webinar is something that is not, um, you know, it's something that somebody can listen to any time. Um, if you're only going to show your, you know, you know, conduct your webinars in the morning, uh, then it's okay to say this morning. Um, I was on an evergreen webinar recently, and and you know what, I I thought I was going to a live webinar. It didn't matter. It was a wonderful internet marketer, and uh, it was quite interesting because I, I I signed up for a morning webinar and I was attending in the morning. And he said, yeah, tonight, you know, this evening, this is what you know, this is what we've been talking about. And it was obvious to me that uh, that that it was an evergreen webinar. Um, but it was also obvious that he kind of missed it because if he was planning an evergreen webinar when he did it live, then he probably would have avoided saying that. Um, and if he hadn't said that, I probably would have been left wondering, you know, was it live or, or wasn't it? Um, because evergreen webinars can be also very, very interactive, just like another webinar. Uh, you can have a poll. Um, you can have a poll where people can vote and, and you can show some results. Uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit. There are ways of, of doing that that are, that, are, that are cool ways of doing it and others that are, that are not. I mean, obviously, you don't want to create a poll and create an end result for a poll that is designed to meet your agenda, whether it's a sales agenda or any kind of agenda. Um, do I build polls in my evergreen webinars? Yes, occasionally I do, but I only do that 
uh, with with uh, with with information that I have already received on you know in other webinars and in other live events where I you know where I get results that are consistently the same. I, you know, I'll give you an example about that. Um, you know, I work in real estate social media policies and procedures area. I am a co-author of, of a manual about that, and I do some training. And uh, my co-author and I have done lots of webinars and lots of training. And when we can ask a question and poll the audience, you know, do you know does your brokerage have a written social media policy and procedure manual? And uh, it's never been higher than ten percent. So, you know, it wasn't higher than 10% two or three years ago, and it isn't, still isn't in, in live types of events. So would I be comfortable in having a poll like that in an evergreen webinar? Yes, in, in that kind of a case, I would. Um, again, it, it, it's not something that you want to manufacture. Um, you want to use that judiciously. You want to be smart about it. You want to be honest. Uh, but it, I, I think that's a kind of a neat thing to do. Uh, chat, you know, you can have an interactive chat uh, on on a um, on an evergreen webinar, and we'll talk about that. I've actually monitored my chat, I'll, and I'll show you how because I'm going to do a whole couple of pieces on evergreen webinar. I have actually had real time um, exchanges with people who were sitting on evergreen webinars that I had, and and then you know established relationships with them. Um, there's no voice, uh, you know, no voice on uh, an evergreen webinar. You can't, you know, jump in the middle of it. You can't, inv you know, involve yourself in, in live, uh, in real time um, on an evergreen webinar because it's, it, you know, it's video based. So, you know, you should know that, um, you know, selecting a webinar platform, um, you know, we'll talk about some different webinar platforms uh, because there are, you know, different webinar, different types of webinars. So for live webinars, uh, you know, what do we want to uh, to think about? What do we recommend? What do we talk about? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I think. Um, and I'm going to add one here too. Hold on a second here. I'm going to add Skype. Uh, and I'm going to add one more here. I'm going to add Yagma. Okay. One of the things I like about the mind maps is that. Uh, you know, in the middle of a presentation, if something occurs to you, you can, you know, you can just make a change on the fly. Uh, you can't do that with a PowerPoint presentation very, very easily without going back and, and, uh, and that's a little bit more of a commotion. That's one of the reasons I like, um, I like, I like my mind mapping. So let's talk about about live webinars here for a second, and and, and what I recommend and, and what I think you should take a look at. I, I think GoToWebinar is really good right now. Um, they certainly had their challenges for some years with technology. Uh, it was very, very spotty. It was really not very, very reliable for a long time. I, became, I was very disenchanted with them, but they really have come a long way. Um, one of the nice things that they have going for them right now is a, uh, it's called HD Faces, where you can actually have the picture of the presenter, not just a picture, but a live view with your webcam while you're presenting. Um, I could have done that with this series here right now. Uh, the reason I didn't was because I um, it just came out of beta. Um, I've seen a couple of people uh, use that in their webinars. They did not do it very successfully. Uh, the only real successful applications I've seen so far have been you know in, in go to webinar training tutorials, and so I didn't want to take that chance. I will be doing it very shortly. Um, I mean, as soon as the first round of these uh, webinars is finished, I'm going to move my platform over to that. Uh, what happens is once you go from the platform as it exists now and you change to that, you can't go back. So I, you know, this, because this is what I know and this is what I've done and, and I've got it down, I, I just didn't want to want to risk that. But go to webinar is great. They have lots of really really good functionality. They've got all their bases covered, um, and I think that's uh, that's a that's a good one. Um, Webex does a terrific job. Webex really is the gold standard of webinar technology. Um, Webex is great and. Um, but it's more expensive for the most part. So, uh, you know, you pay a lot more and it's great. I mean, I, I've, I've uh, presented on WebEx many, many times and it's a good program. If you want to check that out, that's great. If you're going to be um, doing lots of webinars, definitely check it out, you know, and talk to the, talk to the reps who are answering the phone and, and, and cut a deal. You know, there's a lot of negotiating that happens in webinars. Um, instant teleseminar I like. Um, it's a little more static than than the others. Uh, you know, you have to upload your PowerPoint, so you can't really 
Um, you can't really, you know, work with animations and things, and uh, and and it's uploaded to their platform, so you can't make any changes to anything once it's there. Um, but it's really, really easy to to work with once you've uploaded it. It's very easy to advance, and it's very, very easy to operate. Um, I'm going to do a separate uh, a separate video here on on a couple of the workarounds, but I think that's a very, very good service. Uh, a couple of good th things that I like about it a lot are the fact that um, it, you know it's it creates a really great landing page, and it creates a uh, a recording of your webinar that's available immediately afterward, um, and and that's and that's pretty neat. So instant teleseminar, and the other thing is that it's a you know it's a, a teleseminar service as well. Um, certainly, if you wanted to use GoToWebinar as a teleseminar a service, you can also do that, uh, and then of course you would be using the um, uh, the telephone number primarily, and, and that's the whole idea with teleconferences. Although you can also listen to it online, so if you don't want to be interacting, or you, you know, you might might even be interacting. You know, the, the the VoIP is okay for some people. I personally have no problem with VoIP. Um, I have no problem with the with you know computers. You know, working with the computer speakers and microphones. Uh, versus the telephone, um, but again, if you're going to be doing this, you need to know as a presenter that a lot of people will have that problem. Uh, there's a new platform now called Any Meeting at AnyMeeting.com. Um, that's a free live webinar platform, and uh, and they do recording. I looked at it. I haven't used it yet. Um, I've seen some people using it. Um, it seems to have lots of really good features, lots of good functions, and I think it's definitely worth looking at. Um, they have a paid version. Uh, the The free version is supported by advertising, and you know if that's you know if the, if, if you think that's all right, that's fine. I, I personally, I don't think that uh, you know coming up with a uh, with a webinar that that has advertising for all kinds of products around it um, is a really really a good idea for a professional. Um, I think it looks a little cheesy, to be honest with you. But it, you know, people are using it; they're happy with it, and uh, it, you know, it, it, and the paid version looks looks pretty neat. Um, there's another company called Stealth. Um, it really they started with evergreen webinars, and I again, I haven't used this one yet. Um, I don't think that they're as fully featured as some of the others, but 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 I hear wonderful things about their customer service, and that's the reason I'm mentioning that mentioning that here. I've heard. People talk about it. People like uh, like Frank Kern, who is you know Mr. Big in the internet marketing community. Frank Kern is probably the single most brilliant internet marketer in, on, on planet Earth. Um, and in uh, a book I recently read about webinars by Lewis Howes, um, he talks about stealth, and he's been using stealth. So I, I think it's worth mentioning. I, I haven't used it myself, but I think you can you can take a look at that. Um, Skype again for small groups. Uh, you definitely look at it. Skype is great. Uh, you know, it does get squirrely. So, you know, if you schedule a mastermind or you schedule some kind of a meeting webinar and it just doesn't work on Skype, you know, everybody pretty much, you know, goes with the flow because everybody has that experience. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's very, very forgiving. It's usually not your fault. It's usually something to do with the connection and, and people know that. Um, for that reason, you don't want to do anything too critical on Skype that you, where, where you don't have a backup plan. Um, there's a platform called Yugma that uh, also is a uh, live webinar platform. Yugma, I've been using. I used to use that quite a bit. They also had a paid platform. They had paid and a, uh, and, a, and, a and a fee platform. Um, quite interesting. You know, you might want to go in and and check that out. Uh, Yugma also has a plugin for Skype, so you can use Yugma in con in conjunction with Skype to conduct your webinars. And uh, I used to do quite a bit with them and and like them a lot. Uh, there are some that have just come off the market and either been bought out by somebody or just, uh, you know, just not worth talking about. There are, you know, and, and, you know, the other thing about live webinars is there are a lot of companies that offer webinars right now as part of uh, multi-level marketing programs. And most of those, to be honest with you, I, that I've looked at, I don't, um, I don't like, I don't like the features that are, you know, that, 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 that are attached to them. Some of them may be very, very easy, but they're really not as robust as, as the stuff that I look at. So when they're part of a multi-level marketing plan, I, I tend to stay away from them. Uh, the features that you want to uh, look at or, 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 you know, what, what kind of presentations can you give on, on that? If you want to be able to use lots of different types of presentations 
um, you're going to go with something like GoToWebinar. Um, if you want to go on the live web, you're not going to use somebody like Instant Teleseminar, for instance, or, or some others. Um, so you should take a look and see how featured they are. What do you want to do? What kind of presentations do you want to give? Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and take a look at that. You know, if you want to go live on the web, it's going to just leave certain people out. So, you know, take a look and see what the features are and, and what you want to do. Take a, and take a look and see what their registration procedures are like. Um, some of them will build a list for you and give you a list of registrants and give you a list of people who attended, tell you how long they attended and then collect other information. Um, you go to webinar will do that. It will collect the information from the survey that you put out. It will also collect any engagement that happens when people are online. So when you pull up a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, after you have completed a webinar, you will get the person's name, you'll get their email address. You will get the results of, you know, the, of, of the survey that they filled in. You will get, uh, any, any, uh, text transcripts of chat that they've had. And also if they have responded to polls that you've created, you will get that as well. Um, I like to be able to work with integrated cross channel features in my webinar. I'm just tired. I have, I have grown weary of working with a million channels, you know, working with multiple channels, multiple communication channels is not the same as cross channel marketing. Uh, working with multiple channels means you have more stuff to do. It means you have more technology to keep track of, you know, in many cases, more technology to pay for. And if the, the technology doesn't talk to each other, it's a pain in the neck. So I have really, uh, you know, 2011 and, uh, and 2012 have been a time that I've come together and really, uh, you know, married my technology so that I'm working with fewer platforms, but the technology talks to each other. Uh, in terms of the webinar, you know, it's one of the reasons I'm working with two autoresponder systems, AWeber and, uh, and, um, it's in customer. It's because I can take my AWeber account and I've been collecting registrations, you know, from, from go to webinar and I can do it in one process instead of two. Um, I, I, I can make my AWeber account and my instant customer account talk to each other. So if I'm getting a new, a customer uh, registration on AWeber, I can send that to a campaign in instant customer where I have the ability to work with, um, to work with, uh, with SMS text messaging, and I can create the QR code and I can work with voicemail marketing and I can have a built in evergreen system and I can have a, a contest platform where I can, you know, give away a free gift or, or, or whatever. So having integrated cross channel features to me is very, very important. If that's not important to you, then you know, almost anything works, but the choices that I've made in my technology, the, the, you know, the technology that I'm talking about on blogmotherfran.com, everything that I talk about really has an eye to marrying technology and to making technology work and talk to each other, you know, one channel to the next to make it easier, to make it easier to build your business, to collect registrations, to build a list, uh, to communicate with the people on your list, really to connect with them, build their trust, you know, build your credibility, build your expert authority. And at the end of the day, you know, have them, you know, you know, engage with you in a, in a transactional relationship you know, buy something from you, um, sell something through you, um, hire you as a consultant. Uh, you know, if you're a vendor and you sell something else, you know, it, it, you know, people will be buying. So it's a matter of establishing a relationship and, and enough trust that those are people who want to do business with you. And I think that's much accomplished much more easily with a cross channel, um, system. Um, and then of course, uh, you know, finally, and last but not least are evergreen webinars. And, um, I've got two, two different evergreen webinar systems. I, I had evergreen business systems first. It's a really neat, neat system. I'm going to explain them both to you. Um, and I have an instant customer, <clears throat> um, evergreen webinar. That's really, really easy to use. Very, very simple. And it, it you know, it works with, uh, with everything else that you have. So I'll, I'll tell you what, what I'll be doing. For instance, this webinar right now, this view from 30,000 feet will be a, uh, 
a webinar that I will move into an, and, and create an evergreen webinar. I'll create an evergreen webinar at Instant Customer. I'll also create an evergreen webinar at, 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 at my EBS system here. And I will do that within another video. So after I have created this video, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over into the platform that we have for you. Uh, over on, on Kajabi, on my membership site, on blogmotherfran.com. Then I'm going to take that same video. I'm going to create an evergreen webinar. I'm going to create a landing page. I'm going to create a campaign around it. And I'm going to do that in a way that you can look over my shoulder and you can see exactly how I do that every step of the way.